Thank you very much. Thank you. I am the commissioner of comedy. I have been working in comedy clubs for 14 years. You know how you hear these old comedians on talk shows talking about, you know, Johnny, it's too bad there's no place for the young comedians to be bad anymore. Thanks to places like this, there are places to be bad. Places where you can sit in the audience and go, you know, this is really bad. I am so glad there's a place for it. But I am gonna throw out the first joke, and here it is. Man's working at a security guard in a museum, guarding a dinosaur. <laughs> That's not the funny part. Man walks up to him and says, excuse me, how old is this dinosaur? And the guy says, this dinosaur is two billion and four years old. He says, that's amazing. How can you pinpoint that so accurately? He says, well, I started working here four years ago and he was two billion. <laughs> that is the first joke. Thank you very much. Sometimes they ask for your name. I like to just look at them and go, I'm Batman. Because <laughs> there is nothing better than watching a barista stand there and be like, I have a latte for Batman. <laughs> and they have to say it. They have to. It's great. You can give them any name you want. You can. Like this morning, I gave him my Hebrew name. I was like, I'll have a decaf latte. Sure, what's your name? Elazar Yaakov Ben Shlomo. <laughs> she was like, um, do you have a nickname or something? <laughs> well, my friends call me Jew bastard. <laughs> a 
I'm not writing that on the cup, sir. <laughs> All right, fine, then you could use my American Indian name. Puts nothing in tip jar. <laughs> a minute later, I hear one decaf latte for a Jew bastard. I'm the world champion, look at it. It's on a jeans jacket. <laughs> that means it's f***ing real, okay? I'm the greatest athlete in the world and a master of the martial arts. Any other martial artists here tonight? Yes, cool. What belt are you? Red. You're a red belt. Okay. I wouldn't even say that to yourself, let alone in front of other people <laughs> that don't know you. Okay. I'm an extra dark black belt. I could kill you with my left nut, and that's the weaker of my seven nuts. Where'd you train? Where'd you train? In Oregon. Great state, Oregon. One of the top 50 states in America, in my opinion. <laughs> Worst karate schools in the country. A black belt in Oregon is like a light pink belt in Kentucky. I could kill you right now, dude. And there's not a thing you can do about it. You know why? I'm not here right now. I'm behind you. This is a karate mirage to fake you out. Look over your right shoulder. Look over your right shoulder. Nope, I was behind your left shoulder. Could have killed you twice. Never take directions from an opponent. Typical red belt, Oregon karate mistake. So, uh, yes, we're all broke, but we got texting, right? Is texting not the fucking best? I love texting. I got the spell check on my phone. You kind of find out about yourself with the spell check. She'll type in like a mid-level curse word, like douchebag or something. Then the spell check will come on and be like, douchebag? Didn't you mean dirt bike? No, spell check, I meant douchebag. <laughs> and then finally it's like, well, would you like to add douchebag to your dictionary? <laughs> I sure would, spell check, yes. <laughs> Let's keep douchebag handy for next time, shall we? This is L.A. I'm sure I'll be meeting another one within an hour. <laughs> you know what uh, texting has done more than anything to me? It's really revolutionized lying. People lie like fucking crazy via text, particularly when you're making plans with them, and I have a glossary of terms of what people text and what they mean. All right, when someone texts, I'm on my way, <laughs> what they mean is, I'm on my couch. <laughs> yeah. And when they text, hey man, I just pulled up, come outside, what they mean is, hey man, I'm 10 minutes away, but I'd rather you wait for me than I wait for you. Where's your dates, ladies? It's ladies' night, eh? They can't put fucking women on a show without saying it's ladies' night. What's, see, it sucks. Girls have to get jobs now, right? Like, we used to just, like, the women's movement ruined a permanent vacation <laughs> for everybody. It used to be our dad would just give some guys some cows and some land, and we could just relax. <laughs> If we wanted something from our husbands, all we had to do was like twist our dimples and talk like a three-year-old. Please, Mr. Sweetie. <laughs> Buy me a dress. <laughs> and then if he didn't get what you want, get you what you wanted, you just faint. Like <laughs> they were couches made just for fainting. <laughs> the most work you'd have to do was get up out of your king-size bed, walk over to the couch, and pass out. <laughs> kind of at the point now where I never feel that great ever. You know, people are like, how, how are you doing? I'm good. And in my head, I'm like, except for that weird rash on my elbow. <laughs> then I go on WebMD, what's with that weird rash on my elbow? It's like, well, you've got poison ivy or cancer. <laughs> I hate that website. Anything you put in, I've got sniffles. What is that? Common cold or sinus cancer. <laughs> I'll try and go to sleep and think about that for a while. I've been drinking a lot more lately. Not like happy hour drinking, like woo drinking. More like sitting by myself in my kitchen over the kitchen sink under a fluorescent light just staring out the window. Just make it better. <sighs> Getting drunk is fun. Having your girlfriend get more drunk than you and having to get her in the car at the end of the night, not that much fun. It's like trying to get a toddler in the car after a day at the carnival, isn't it? Where are your shoes? What happened to your shoes? 
No, stop crying and get in the car. No, I don't hate you, just get in the car. <laughs> Did you wet your pants? I must be back in Hollywood. I was in San Diego last night, hooked up with the hottest girl of my life. And I did, too bad she was crazy. <laughs> After one day, she was like, I think I love you, I do. I think we're gonna get married, I see signs. <laughs> I see one too, mine says 405 North, I'm getting the hell away from you. <laughs> I heard on the radio today on the drive back home that if your kid is under four foot nine, you're supposed to have him in a car seat. <laughs> That's like, Eight inches shorter than I am right now. <laughs> I'm like a knee injury away from needing a damn car seat. I was thinking, well, what if you're in high school? You know, little stud, state champ on the wrestling team. You just haven't hit your growth spurt. Your dad's like, get in your car seat. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry your mom's Asian, but I can't get another ticket. Get your ass. not very tall. Girls are always coming up to me after shows and saying stuff to me like, you look taller on stage. <laughs> yeah, well, it's elevated, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Judge me. You guys seem nice. I'm kind of tired today. The people next door to me last night in my hotel room were humping all night, which I'm a big fan of that, you know, but those people never look how you picture them to look. <laughs> I was laying there picturing movie stars all night, you know. Help me get through it. I saw them at breakfast. They did look like movie stars. Fucking Donkey and Shrek. <laughs> I tried to pay them back for it at like 4 a.m. I figured they'd be sleeping, so I took my headboard and I started banging it against the wall, you know, make them think I was getting laid too, but... I was late, and I was tired, and got the voices confused, so. After a while, it just sounded like two dudes humping in there. I'm all, you want that, baby? Yes, I do. Give it to me. <laughs> 